Okay, so in this video, we'll have a simple circuit in which we are going to solve the required quantities by using um, mesh, uh, mesh analysis. Okay, so let's just read first the problem for the circuit shown. So find the load current, the load voltage and power, the current delivered by the sources. So we have E1 and E2 as shown in the circuit and the circuit efficiency. Okay. So in this problem, we'll be using a mesh current in order to solve for the unknowns, okay? So let's begin. So first, we will write our mesh current. So maybe we will write one using the green, okay? So the direction of the current is clockwise. This will be our loop current one, and this will be our loop current number two. Okay, so next, we'll get the mesh equation. So mesh at loop 1, so mesh analysis. Okay, so let's just, just put in mesh analysis at loop number 1. Okay, so we have the voltage sources. So considering loop 1, loop current 1, so it will exceed on the positive. So this will be 26. Maybe we we'll just uh, neglect the unit because all of that will be in terms of voltage because we are using mesh analysis. Then that will be minus the voltage drop caused by the loop current. So that will not be I2 but I1. Then the, the sources, no? the are the resistances that are transversed by loop current one so that will be r1 maybe we'll write this this one here as i1 and this is i r2 r2 so that will be plus r1 plus rl then plus the loop current that is sharing the same branch with your loop current one and, and for this circuit that is loop current two so this will be i2 times the resistance that is shared which is 0 0.8 so again the symbol is positive because the direction of, of your loop current will collide with the direction of your loop current number one so your loop current number two will collide with the with your loop current number one when they come when they are flowing on this branch okay so maybe we'll just put first the variable we'll not write the value first okay so this is equal to zero so this will be just e sub one okay then first we will transpose this one to the other side the voltage so we have negative i1 times r1 plus r1 plus rl so i have two r1s the big and the small and the small so i2 times rl is equal to negative e sub 1 then multiply both sides by negative 1 so we have here positive i1 so r1 plus r sub 1 the big and the small times rl okay plus i oh no no that will not be plus because we are multiplying negative here is so we negative i2 times rl is equal to positive a sub one then now we will just substitute the values that are given so this will be i1 times 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8 minus i2 times 0 0.8 is equal to 26 okay then we will just simplify this further especially this one so that will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 0 0.4 plus 0 0.8 so that will be 1.2 i1 minus 0 0.8 i2 equal to 26 so this is our equation number one of course we have two loop currents or mesh currents 
So we will have also two equations. So we now go to mesh number two. Okay. So mesh analysis at loop number two. Okay, so let's just check. So we have our source as E sub 2. So it will exit on the negative side. So that will be negative. Negative E sub 2. And we have the voltage drops. So that will be minus. So we are considering loop current number 2. So that will be E sub 2 times the bol the resistances so 0.8 0.2 and 0.2 okay so, so or that will be rl plus r2 plus r sub 2 which is a small r sub 2 then plus so the loop current which share the same branch with our loop current number 2 and that is RL and they are also colliding so our we consider our loop current as a uh, loop current number 2 as negative so our loop current 1 will be positive for this um, analysis so that will be I1 times the resistance that they share or common to them that will be RL RL is equal to 0 we will transpose E sub 2 to the other side of the equation. So we have negative I2 times RL plus R2 plus R sub 2 plus I1 times RL is equal to E sub 2. Then we multiply both sides by negative 1. So we have, let's write first our I1, so negative I1 times RL plus I sub 2, so RL plus R2 plus R sub 2 is equal to negative A sub 2. Then we will um, put the values that are given, so for RL that will be 0 0.8, okay? So we have negative 0 0.8 RL plus I2 times so 0 0.8 for RL. So our R2 is also uh, no, it's 0 0.2. Okay, 0 0.2 R2, the internal resistance, that is also 0 0.2. Okay, and our voltage E sub 2, that is 24. So negative 20. So just simplify this one. So we have negative 0 0.8 RL plus E sub 2. Okay, we just get the sum of this um, group here. So that is 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 that will be 1 plus 0 0.2 that will be 1.2. So 1.2 E sub 2 is equal to negative 24. And this is equation number two okay so for this one i have used the um the kramer's rule in solving this one okay so we have used the kramer's rule and now we will go directly on getting the um the uh, value of i1 so i will i will just uh, first solve for i1 then i will just uh, review again how to get the kramer's rule because uh, something happened to our um, screen recorder okay so let's just continue um solving for e sub 1 or i sub 1 okay so let's just show here our calculator Okay. So this is twenty six times one point two. Maybe we, we will solve first the um, the upper part of our 
um, Kramer's rule. Okay, so 26 times 1.2 minus okay, that will be 0 0.8 negative and negative 0.8 so times negative 24. Okay, so we have 12. So this is 12 over so now we will be solving this one okay so we have 1.2 times 1.2 minus so that is 2.8 so do we have 0.8 times 0.8 so we have negative 0.8 so we could have that one as squared so that is equal to 0 0.8. So this is equal to 0 0.8. Then we will have, okay, so 12 divide 0 0.8. So this is equal now to 15. So our I sub 1 or our current at loop 1 that is equal to 15 amperes okay now we will go to solving for i2 so i believe the feed is a uh, cut off during the i i am not sure but this uh, the feed cut off during the um during the part in which we are getting um the equation for um for loop current 2 or maybe during the use the making of the matrix this matrix here okay so maybe on that, maybe we'll just review how we get the matrix. No? So this matrix. So for this matrix, okay. So we have the equation one and equation two here. So the I sub the your this part here, this part of your matrix, this column, this is reserved for the coefficients of I sub one for the two equations. So that, that that's why this. In this, uh, this is 1.2 for this coefficient of I sub 1 in equation 1. This is, we just use the hand. This is negative 0 0.8 because that is the coefficient of I sub 1 for equation 2. Now for, for this one, this is negative 0 0.8 because this column is reserved for the coefficients of I sub 2 for each equation. So we have this one. Okay. So also 1.2, and this is the uh, matrix for the um, for the uh, unknown. Then this is the matrix for the constant. So that's why it is 26 for equation one and 24 for equation two. Now we will go to solving for I2 using the Kramer's rule. Okay, so we will have another color, maybe violet. I hope the violet will be clear on the. Okay. solving for i sub 2 okay so your i sub 2 is equal to met the matrix when you have replaced this column with the i sub 2 and the, the determinants of the real of, of this matrix okay so we just rewrite this one so we will put this uh, matrix of our or the elements of our matrix for the constant to this column so we will have 1.2 then this will be 0 0.8 negative then that will be 26 negative 24 then for our denominator maybe this is just the same with this um, determinants for our um, i sub 1 which is equal to 0 0.8 so we just write here 0 0.8 to make our solutions as uh, simpler then we will get the determinant so this will be 1.2 times negative 24 then we have minus negative 0 0.8 times 26 over 0 0.8 then we will simplify this one using our calculator okay we have so we have 
times negative 24 minus negative 0.8 so that will be times 26 okay 26 so we will have negative 8 so this will be negative 8 divide by 0 0.8 so we will have so we'll just divide it by 0 0.8 so we have negative 10 amperes okay so if we go back to our circuit okay so the value of our i sub 1 is 15 okay 15 so this is 15 amperes it's just maybe we will have this one in these colors this is 15 amperes now for our i sub 2 this is negative 10 amperes so what does it mean for our loop current i2 okay so for our loop current i2 because it is negative so our day our direction is on the opposite um, uh, side or in the opposite direction so the current i2 to be positive our i2 must be flowing in this direction so this would be i2 maybe i will just have this one in a different color from the resistance okay so let's try i almost run of color white so why not this white so this will be the direction of i2 so this will now become be this this now will become positive so for our i1 it is the same so this is i1 now if we are going to have a a tcl at this junction so this is the load current this will be our il so tcl maybe we'll call this one as node a or junction a so if we are going to write that one here okay so tcl at node a so current entering is equal to current leaving the junction so our current entering is i1 and i2 so i1 plus i2 and our leaving will be il okay so il is leaving this junction here il okay so we will now substitute in order to solve for il so our i1 is 15 amperes now for our i2 this is not negative okay huh? this is not negative because we are considering this direction of i2 okay so that direction of i2 so this will be positive okay 10 amperes is equal to il so our il now is equal to 25 amperes so this is now our load current okay now if we if we will not consider the direction of i2 okay so we will not um we will not defer this the direction of i2 so we will just use the i2 that we are considering the direction the same direction of i2 that we are considering so this will be on the other side okay so our tcl now will become i1 is equal to because we have current entering and current leaving so the current leaving is il and i2 then our current entering is i1 so if you are cons to consider that one okay so we have the alternate tcl at node a okay so we have our current entering is i1 is equal to our current leaving which is il and i2 so we're solving for il so il is equal to so we will transpose it one to the other side this will be i1 minus i2 so our i1 here is 15 then our exact i2 because we are not considering the the direction so this will be negative 10 amperes and we still have the same answer which is 25
here. So, meaning, the negative sign of the ten of your I2 is just a notation that your direction during your analysis is on the opposite side. Or you are using the opposite direction as compared to the actual um, direction of your current. Okay, so we have we have answer letter A. Now we go to letter B, the load voltage. Of course, it's very easy. Load voltage and the load power. Okay, so we have now our R, RL which is 0 0.8 and we have our IL which is 25 amperes. Okay, we could use Ohm's law. So Ohm's law, that will be VL. Then we have IL times RL. Okay, so solving for voltage using Ohm's law. So we have 25 amperes times 0 0.8. So this will be equal to, maybe we'll just have our calculator. Okay, so we have point, uh, 8 times 25. Okay, this just rumble the multiplication. So that will be 20. Okay, so our voltage is 20 volts. Okay, then our power, of course, we could use the power formula. So, PL is equal to VL times IL. Or you could use the other one. So, the other formula if you are considering these two. So, the, the formula for PL is also equal to IL squared times RL. Okay. So, with use first this one so we have 20 times 25 uh, amperes okay we just write the voltage so 20 volts times uh, 25 amperes okay so our PL is equal to so we say our calculator again so that will be 20 times 25 this is equal to 500 watts okay so if you are going to use the other one maybe i'll just um move my calculator so using the other formula so we have this will be equal to 25 ampere so square that one times 0 0.8 for our ohms for our uh, resistance so our load to power so we have 25 squared times 0.8 so we have 500 also okay 500 watts. So same answer using different formulas. Okay. Now we will have the other required for the problem. Okay. So we have the current delivered by uh, I1, uh, E1, and E2. Okay. So the current delivered by E1 and E2. So that will be um, these two, no? the I1 and I2. We have for the current delivered for I1, which is 15 amperes. So we just write here. So current delivered. Okay, so for E1, which is equal to 20, let's just look here, what is it? it's equal to 26 volts, okay? It's equal to 26 volts. So this is I1 which is equal to 15 amperes for um, voltage number 2 so this will be 36 okay so our current is negative 10 amperes again the sign is just the direction of our current okay then the last one is the efficiency okay we have the efficiency so we'll just get the total so the circuit efficiency i believe okay circuit efficiency 
Okay, so to get the circuit efficiency, circuit efficiency. Okay. So our circuit efficiency is for this one. This is equal to our power on the load times the power of the load plus the losses. Okay. So what are the losses? So the losses are the voltage drops. And times 100. Okay, so we will have a percentage. Okay, so first we will get the PL in which we have already solved that one. So our PL is equal to 500 watts. Now our losses is the power in each of these resistances. So not considering RL. Okay. So for the losses so our losses is first we will have i1 squared okay we just use this formula i squared and r so the the for the formula for getting power in which you are considering only the the resistance and the current so the resistances transverse by r i by by i1 is 0.1 and 0.3 so we just write here 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3 okay so we will just use first the variables so this is r1 plus r1 I believe that is how we need okay then plus I2 squared times R2 plus R2. Okay, so note for this I2 here, your I2 must be the correct direction. So this will be not negative but positive. Okay, so you have, so I1 here is 25 amperes squared times 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3. Okay, so the R ohms plus 10 amperes squared. And it's just the value of R2 and R1. So that will be 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. So you have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 ohms. Okay, so our losses now is 25 so squared times 0.4 plus 10 squared so also times 0.4 okay so this is now equal to 266 so we have 266 watts okay so our efficiency so we have our PL which is 500 so we have 500 watts over PL plus the losses 500 watts plus 266 watts times 100 okay so solving for our efficiency Maybe it's just show our calculator. Okay. So that will be five hundred over five hundred plus two seven six times. 100. Okay, so that is not 276 but 266. Okay, 266. So it's now equal to okay, so 65.27. So we have 65.27%. So that is now your circuit efficiency. So we have solved our problem. This is the solution for 
the entire problem okay so I guess it is a much um, much longer solution but of course we are doing it by um, using the Kramer's rule and also we have um, uh, lots of uh, requirement for the problem but the very first step for us is to know the loop current so that's why we solve for i1 and i2 in order for us to get the other uh, quantities which are required by the problem okay so thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe and i hope you learned something and as always keep on studying